Hi, this is Kristen. And this is Aaron. And this is Drive Mode Show. What are we talking about today, Aaron? We are talking about electric cars. Sweet. Specifically, the Bolt EV. Yes. Because we both drove it, was that two weeks ago? Last week. Was it? Well, I lost yeah. track. Yeah. Might have been two weeks for you, but it was last week for me. Ah, very good. Okay. <laughs> so, what did you think? You drove it with your family? No, actually, I just drove it solo. Um, my family met me after the after the afterwards, and I okay. went from that tiny little compact Bolt to a giant uh, Silverado 2500. <laughs> Shock. A little bit of an adjustment, but it's part of the gig, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we started out, uh, Chevy flew us to, uh, Seattle and then we drove all the way down to, um, Portland. Uh, so just outside of Portland and then Portland proper, um, it, and I did the whole thing on one charge. So uh, outside of when I stopped to plug it in uh, because I wanted to, you know, do that, right? <laughs> I wanted to see what is this, how does the app work? What does it do? So I had to, I pulled in and plugged in. Uh, because of where I live, an electric car is a rarity. It's not a normal thing. Um, and so when I get access to them, I like to try the full experience. But I was amazed, um, 250 some odd miles of range in that car. 259. For under 40 grand. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. It, I think they, did they go up by 10%? It was 238 for the 2019 and now it's 259. It's a 21 mile increase is what they said. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. And it's a, it starts at, uh, 37 and a half, so 37,500, give or take, for that car. That's, that's nuts. The base level Model 3 does not have that much range, nor does any other electric vehicle uh, on the road at that price point. So c can you compare it to some of the other vehicles in its, um, in its segment? So compared to the Tesla Model 3, I would say that the Bolt is... A little bit smaller but more uh, more versatile more useful uh, because it's more of a square shape than a sedan shape uh, so you can get more things in it I was amazed at how much crap I got in the trunk of that thing because um, I had two carry-ons plus my camera bag plus my briefcase and I loaded all that in there with no issues um, the little the bottom of the in the trunk the uh, the tr the cover so the the base you can lift that up and you can set it up against the back seats it falls into a little slot and you gain about three or four inches of of space back there in a tub sort of like a minivan would have when the back seats when the third row is folded up uh, or in deployed that sort of thing really cool um, just nicely thought out and done I thought I was I was really surprised. How did you feel about the headroom? Because the guy I rode with, um, one of the marketing guys, and he was six three, and mm -hmm. he had still plenty of headroom in the passenger seat. Yeah, feel I'm comfortable? six foot three and two hundred and forty five pounds, depending on when I went to the bathroom last. And <laughs> and uh, uh, I had tons of headroom in that car. And I'll also note. The door sill, the door uh, tops are really high and the sills are fairly low. So getting in and out was really, really easy, even for somebody of my size. What about you? Did you drive? What did you think of the, uh, of the drive quality, the acceleration and the feel of the car? I really enjoyed it. I liked the one pedal driving. I drove it on low pretty much the whole time. And it took me a second to get used to it, you know, because mm -hmm. you're so used to using your brake. And I enjoyed that. I liked all the energy reporting that it had on the screen. It had a really nice screen. Um, so I, I thought that I thought they did a really nice job with that. I also liked in the console there was a, like a person seated, so you could see where your air conditioning or heating was mm. being directed. And I so thought that was clever. Officially, that is called a mode man. 
A mode I was man. Pioneered by Volvo. It was a little bit nerve wracking. I have to admit, as we started losing charge and we got down to the last 20 miles or something and I had to get to the airport. <laughs> so that's the one thing that, that gives me a little hesitation with the EVs. Mm -hmm. And for you, you know, you have these wide open spaces where you live. <laughs> it right. would be tough to find a, a charging station probably. Um, so in Cheyenne proper, the only charging stations I know of that are public are at a Nissan dealership. Uh, there are no, and, and the, the Tesla superchargers that are over by the mall. Uh, other than that, I have no options outside of my house uh, for plugging in. But I, in an area where there are a lot of plugs, like where we were, that was really great. Um, all I did was I was just driving along and I hadn't gotten as far as Astoria. And so I was still in Washington and I just came down and I just uh, hit the Chevy, um, I forget what it's called, but on the Chevy app on the screen, you can look for charging stations. So you can hit a thing and it'll show you where the nearest one is. And then if your phone is plugged in, so I had, I had the, the, uh, my Chevrolet app running and Android auto and my phone was plugged in and it just, it used my phone to find the nearest one and then it just told me where it was and then mapped me there. And I went straight over there and pulled in. It's a charge point, had a card, used it, uh, plugged in for a few minutes. Uh, I wasn't there for very long, but I did put in, I think it was 14 miles of charge uh, okay. in the short amount of time I, I was there. Uh, and then I drove the rest of the way, stayed overnight um, at Cannon Beach. I still had a lot of a lot of power left, and when I pulled into the Portland airport, so, uh, the, it was a, a park and ride right before the airport, but it was within a mile of that airport. When I pulled in there, I still had thirty something miles of range on that car, and that was all highway driving. So that was really amazing. I was surprised at how far you can get. Um, the only downer would be that it takes you 45 minutes to an hour to charge that car versus uh, versus pulling into a pump and shoving in the knot. Well, in Oregon, somebody else has to do that. True. <laughs> Oregon and but, New Jersey, right? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, I was really surprised by the car. I thought it drove really well. Uh, my only my only real downer with that car was the, uh, lots of highway noise. Um, it was very loud inside. Um, you could fix that with the stereo. <laughs> so, you could. Which makes me wonder, what was the what was the right music for that car, Kristen? Okay, so you're gonna laugh at this, but mm -hmm. I think I was in the shower that morning, getting ready for the day, getting ready to drive, and that's when all good songs come to your head, or all good ideas mm -hmm. come in the shower, right? So the song "I'm Easy Like Sunday Morning," <laughs> okay. and the reason why is because I was thinking. I'm Evie like Chevy Bolt. You know, I'm Evie like Chevy Bolt. Yeah. Hmm. There's a jingle waiting to happen there. That is. I don't <laughs> think it will, though. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no. For me, it not. was System of a Down. Really? Okay, yeah. that's an interesting choice for that car. Um, Why? The reason was that they're very eclectic anyway. So it's very eclectic music. Um, their lyrics range and move a lot so they don't they don't have like one subject they go all, all over the place uh, but in general they tend to be uh, high-minded and open-minded with with things that uh, you know when 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 uh, uh, Serge is singing that's usually you know he, he tends towards those subjects and then just the the eclectic sound of the music uh, so just that whole thing just kind of came together and seemed to fit that car Interesting choice. I haven't Plus heard I was by myself, down in so minute. I could flip through the stations all I wanted, and I could go <laughs> and try everything. <laughs> but did you, or did you stay on Octane? Actually, um, I went because of where we were driving. Reception was in and out a lot, 
uh, you're going through the mountains and through the trees and the hills and everything else. Uh, so after going through stations through Seattle and down until I got to where it started to break up a lot, um, I did go through just several stations. I didn't find one that, that I sat on. Uh, and then after it started cutting out, I just started streaming off my phone. And that was where, you know, it hit. Um, my phone was just running random, so it was just picking random songs out of it. So it'll have everything from Grateful Dead to uh, Vivaldi to Metallica to uh, Death to, you know, just... So it ranges from, like, classical music to death metal to... Uh, to uh, folk and all kinds of stuff and so just when it came up with um, I think the first song was Aerials System of a Down Aerials and then uh, New Guns I think was the next one those songs just started to fit and so I, I found myself skipping and skipping and then eventually I just said only play that artist and it just fit for the last maybe hour of driving we played, my drive partner and I played a lot of Coffee House, Channel 14 on Sirius. Okay. And I think because that fit the area and the vibe and we stopped for mm -hmm. coffee. And I don't drink coffee much. I mean, I don't, I don't drink coffee every morning or anything like that. And there you're drinking yours now. <laughs> but when I do, it really, it keeps me awake for hours. So that night, I think it was, I don't think I fell asleep till two. I was like, working and working and working and working. <laughs> All right, so how about room for improvement? The sound, that would be my first one. Uh, some sort of, they need more sound dampening and noise canceling in the car. Okay. Um, because it's electric, you I feel like it must be getting more road noise because there's no engine drone to kill out some of that road noise. Uh, and so I think they could just work on coming up with something to cancel that. Uh, I would like to have more, um, cabin options, places to put things, uh, you know, little things, um, and, um, air options. Uh, there was no sunroof. There was no, you know, just things like that, that I, I like to have in a car sometimes. Um, but that would affect the mileage then, right? Because the sunroof is heavy. Which is the reason it's why they don't and have... It changes aerodynamics slightly, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something else. Oh, uh, what did you think about the battery presentation? I thought that was really interesting. They likened the battery to a layer cake, and they fed us layer cake, which is also nice. Yeah. I'll, I'll put up a photo of that, because I took a photo of that table. Um, and I was interested because all of their battery improvements were based on... Um, just improving that wafer. So though the layer cake is the analogy they use, which is really smart. Uh, they just improve, made improvements in that. So the batteries didn't change in size uh, and they had very little weight gain as a result. So it was really, really cool. Which um, is not like real cake, because if you do eat a lot of cake, then you will have weight gain. <laughs> the good news is batteries don't get gout. <laughs> <laughs> or diabetes, or any of the other things, high cholesterol, or high blood pressure, or any of the things that come with eating too much cake. I was I asked him about recyclability as well, because that's always a concern. People talk about the sustainability. They have a robust recycling program, and a lot of the components they use are recyclable, so I think that's important. Well, Chevy has a triple zero initiative that they talked about during the presentation, Zero emissions, zero crashes, zero, what's the other thing? Zero congestion. Mm. So that's one thing I noted in my review is that um, it seems to me that for the difference in the price point, I would like to them to see them include more safety even in the base model. I think, mm. I feel very strongly that safety should not be optional. I mean, they right. do provide the rear seat alert and teen driver which i think are both really good and chevy does a great job with that it says they're smart but i'd like to see more of those safety features even at the base hmm yeah i can i can uh it's actually 
it brings the question, why don't they include the, you know, collision warning and uh, automatic braking and all of that? Uh, why isn't that standard? Because it's standard on really, really inexpensive cars now. Um, Toyota and Nissan yeah, you got Toyota, do a really good Nissan job Nissan across the board. You got, so yeah, just, um, the other thing that, that, annoyed me honest was that uh, there was no in-car GPS you have to use your phone um, that's probably not a big deal for some people uh, but for people like me where I'm plugging into different cars all the time and uh, people like me where my Android Auto does not always work right I get into a car and I plug in I'm not necessarily going to be able to connect um, you know it's just there's so much variance, it's iffy sometimes. And uh, restricting me to only having that as a navigation option is, um, is an annoyance, especially in a car that that's, high, that's that high tech. You got a 10 inch screen in that thing. It's with, a beautiful screen. Yeah, it's a wonderful screen. I will point out though, I do wanna say this, my Chevy app is brilliant. I really like that. I like checking charge states. Like I could just sit in my hotel room and push the button and check what state, where, what, how the battery's doing, what the outside temperature is, all kinds of stuff. And then you can turn on the horns and lights because somebody's look, you know, somebody shifties too close to your car. So you, <laughs> um, you can lock and unlock the doors. You can preset the climate. You can do all kinds of stuff from that little app. Really, really cool. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think it's it's high tech. And I think they did a really good job with that. I liked a lot of things about it. And what the marketing manager was telling me was that they've done a lot to gamify it, to make it really competitive. People yeah. who drive EVs are very competitive with the way they drive it. They want to see achievements. They want to see how well they did. And mm -hmm. a lot of those screens and reports are geared toward that. Well, people will take pictures of their results and then share it in different groups. They've got whole Facebook groups for for bolt ev users yeah i i went through those screens um i took a few photos so i'll try to show those but i went through those screens to, that show uh your energy use on the current drive energy use over time uh, all kinds of different metrics and um how it's affecting like your driving style how it's affecting so the speeds that you're going the terrain how are you using uh, climate controls all those things play in and go there's these little graphs and little things that just make you go you know and and like you said it's gamified because it's very scored so you're like you know um one thing i, know, I, like, did, I got I just the high realized, score <laughs> one thing i just realized back to your safety point chevy doesn't include um a lot of those uh, common safety items and they don't have adaptive crews uh, on this car as a result um, but they do have a Wi-Fi uh, wi hotspot as standard so maybe that's geared toward Gen Z maybe maybe they don't care about the safety stuff they do though I mean they've got the triple zero initiative right I mean they care about it but no, I, feel I, mean, like... I mean, maybe the generation the car is aiming for doesn't care. So maybe maybe those Gen Zers really aren't interested because they assume they're just gonna drive. It's gonna drive them uh, automatically at some point. I don't know. Well, according, so I actually I went to a Nissan presentation in Miami a couple months ago, and they had, Ed Kim gave a presentation about Gen Z, and he was talking about the their number one concern about autonomous driving is safety. I mean, so they're concerned about safety and they're concerned about pricing because they've grown up during some of the global financial crisis. So they're very aware of being smart with their money and also being safe. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know. I mean, I, I think that, um, and I think we've mentioned this before, but manufacturers like Toyota and Lexus, TSS 2.0, where they're including all the safety standard, I think it's so important. I think it's, mm -hmm. I think it's a smart move. I think um, my honest opinion has been that autonomy, so automatic cars, uh, so self-driving whatever cars, 
I don't think safety is going to sell them. I think that will be a part of it, and that will be what ends up being the focus for legislation and other things. Uh, but I really think that what will sell the what will sell a self-driving car is convenience. Um, when I can part, stop the car in front of the in front of the the store, so I can stop in front of Target or Walmart or whatever, and get out and then say, "Go park yourself," and go in, and I can come back out come and back. hit a button and say. Hey, come pick me up, and it comes around and picks me up, and I put my stuff in it and go, and I can be sitting in the house still in my pajamas at 8 in the morning, and the kids are ready for school. I can say, just go get in the car, and it goes and takes <laughs> them to school. Those things are what, honest, I really think that's what's going to sell them. I that, think that's what Knight Rider did, though, back in the 80s. Right. Kit, so, it's already been get, done. It's been done. <laughs> So passe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With that Cylon thing going across the front. Of that was a pretty good sound effect, Aaron. Good job. <laughs> I have tried to instill in my kids the importance of good sound effects. <laughs> well, maybe you should put them on the show and let them do it. Okay, so final word on the Bolt EV. Would you pick the Bolt over the Volt, which is no longer in production, but it was a hybrid. Would you pick the EV over the hybrid? At this point, if my choice were those two uh, and where I live was not a factor, so if I lived where a plug-in car is a good idea, because I don't live where a plug-in car is a good idea. Like Austin. Right. If I lived in Austin, if I lived in even just Denver proper, uh, which isn't too far from me, uh, if I lived in a place where a plug-in car makes sense, I would definitely take the Bolt. Um, the Volt is a very, very pretty car. It's really good looking. It but is. But it's not anywhere near as versatile and useful. Um, it's just not on the same level at all. And the little Bolt is just a, a, a wonderful melding of what we expect out of a say compact crossover or small uh, hatchback um, and an electric powertrain. It's just a really, really good combination of that. So I would definitely go with that. Um, even I would even take it over a Tesla Model 3. Why? For the same reasons. Okay. What would you say? I love, uh, I have a thing for hybrids. I have to say, I, and maybe I'm, um, behind in this way, but I love having the backup engine. Mm -hmm. It just makes me feel more secure. That said, I love the way the Bolt EV felt. I thought it accelerated well. I loved the way it felt once you got it going. I really would have liked to have the adaptive cruise control because now I really like that, now that I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. You know, first when I first started trying some of these things, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't want that. But now I like it. It's like new math, you know? I love it. <laughs> That's all I got about the Bolt today. How about yep. you? Yep. I'm tapped out. I haven't even written my review yet. Slacker. Get to work. <laughs> I'm working on so, it today. All right, we'll get to work. This okay. has been the Drive Mode Show. This has been Aaron. This has been Kristen. And thanks for listening. <laughs>